I love reviewing portfolios of popular investors. It gives me a lot of ideas for my own portfolio. And I also try to find out, try to learn why they bought a specific investment. And for Monish Pabrai, his 13F hasn't came out yet. They come out, I believe, late May or early June. But his Wagons Fund portfolio PDF did come out and it shows his holdings as of March 31st, 2024. Most of you know what the Wagons Fund is. It's more of a mutual fund that's accessible to retail investors. You could buy it on interactive brokers, fidelities, and many other things. And he did disclose his holdings. And I personally really like one of them. I'm going to talk about it in the video. I'm going to share it. It's trading around seven times earnings. To me, it's a genius play, genius find. I really love it very much, and I'm interested in buying it. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, and I'm going to analyze it and do all these things in the video. So this stock is a stock called GPI, which is Group 1 Automotive. If you notice, Monish Pabrai bought many of the car dealership, Group 1, AutoNation, Lycia Motors, and these stocks are trading at very attractive valuations especially group one now group one he most likely bought it between january and march so i would assume that group one is up around 13 percent from his cost basis which is not too far from where it's trading at right now and group one does own dealerships in 17 states in the united states and it also owns some right now in the united kingdom and they've been expanding over there pretty amazing stuff and they have a lot of exposure to texas and texas has been a high migration area a lot of people have been moving to texas buying cars over there and group one has been a beneficiary of this trend they are, they are diversified across many brands 21 percent from toyota 12 percent from bmw 9 percent from gm 7 percent from ford honda and you know mercedes and many different brands that they have 42 percent is more on luxury side 21 percent is domestic 37 percent is imports pretty good now the best part about group one and most car dealerships especially in the united states is most of their gross profits and most of their profits in general aren't made by buying and selling used cars they are mainly made by doing maintenance and you know finance insurance and many other things and this is the concern that a lot of people have is we're going into a recession and people might not be able to buy a lot of the cars. But if people are not buying new cars, they are most likely fixing their cars to maintain it, to keep it. And if they want to maintain their car, they're likely going to go to the dealership to maintain it. And this is where Group 1 will benefit massively from this trend also. So it's not as affected by massive recessions as you believe. Yes, the stock might decline with the market, of course, like it declined in 2020, like it declined in many different places. And and of course, their used car business or new car sales will eventually decline. But in terms of maintenance and repairs, parts and stuff, they will help, you know, navigate the cycles. Now for Group 1, 34% of the revenues is used vehicle sales, 49% is new vehicles, 13% is parts and services, and 4% insurers. But if you look at gross profits, 25% of the gross profits is finance and insurers, 42% is parts and services, you know, mainly maintenance. 11% uh, used vehicle and 21% you know, new vehicle. And this will really help them navigate many economic cycles. Now, something else that will help them navigate such cycles for Group 1 is they own a lot of the dealerships that they have. Some of them, they own them free and clear, so they're not really paying rent. They are not facing increase in inflation in terms of increasing rents. Maybe they have to pay more property taxes, more utilities, but in terms of rents, they are mostly shielded from this area. So in 2023, around 67% of their real estate is owned and 33% is leased. And it's around $2.5 billion of net value, net property value for the properties and the dealerships that they own, which pretty much covers their short-term debt and long-term debt. So if they decide to do a sale leaseback, meaning just, you know, sell it to something like, you know, realty income or a lot of the REITs, and then they can get the money and then pay the debt and just rent it out, like a lot of, like MGM did with VC properties, they sold the properties to VC. So many companies do that. And Group 1 is not planning on doing that, but they do have this option and they own real estate. And this gives them an advantage over many of their different competitors for having somewhat higher margins. Something else that I like about Group 1 is mainly the acquisitions. They do a lot of acquisitions to grow revenues, grow net income, earnings per share, many other things. So they do acquisitions. They did, for example, $1.1 billion 
worth of acquisitions, nine franchises in 2023, but they also do pay a dividend and the dividend has been increasing from 2021 to 2023. And they also do buybacks whenever the stock goes down. They bought back 5% of the market cap in 2023. In 2022, they bought 18% of the market cap. This is massive shareholder value creation. And in terms of an example of their acquisition, this is their most recent one. And they entered an agreement to acquire a UK automotive retail business and, and even with the real estate. So they paid around $439 million for this acquisition. But out of the $439 million, $279 million is inclusive of real estate. So the real estate value that they're buying is $279 and they're paying around $439 for the whole acquisition. So in my opinion, this is, I mean, this is a pretty decent deal. And the company did $2.7 billion of revenues over the last year. And their net income is like most likely 3 to 4%. So in my opinion, they got a very good deal on it and they're acquiring more and more real estate, which is something that I really, really like with a company like Group One. And UK new car sales have been skyrocketing in February. The most, like over the last 20 years, they were suffering over the last year or two. Now it's picking up. February was the most it increased over the last 20 years. So this is going to help Group One in the future. In terms of their interest expense or the debt maturities, they are not a huge problem right now because most of the maturities, the major ones, they're going to start to you know, be due in 2027 to 2028. But from 2024 to 2026, nothing major is due. So this is very good for uh, Group 1. Now I'm going to talk about the risks. The first one is mainly used car prices coming down. Most of you are familiar with this, you know, used vehicle index, value index, and it's been coming down. Now it did massively skyrocket after 2020. You know what happened after COVID with the chip shortage and, and all these things that happened. It massively skyrocketed used car prices. And it of course helped the margins of a lot of the retailers and a lot of the dealers that have been holding on inventories with much lower prices. Prices went up, they sold them for much higher profits. Of course, it helped companies like Group One and many different dealerships. And now the opposite is happening and you could clearly see it from the net income margins of Group One. Net income margins went from 1.5% in 2019 to 4.6% in uh, 2022. Now, as of late 2023, it's like 3.3%. And if you look at it over the last quarter on a quarterly basis, it's been steadily coming down. I think it sounds 3.1 or 3.2%. I can share the chart, but it's been steadily pulling back. And this could be a massive risk for the company that maybe net income margins went up just because used prices went up and now used prices are coming down and GPI does have a lot of inventories. They increased a lot. Some of it is due to, of course, you know, slower market in general, but it's also due to acquisitions, acquiring more dealerships, which is, of course, going to increase their inventories. So they are holding on $1.9 billion worth of inventories. And if used prices continue declining, I would expect their margins to continue declining too. So this is a massive, massive risk for something like GPI. Of course, if we have a recession, these things will be you know, magnified. Something else that I see somewhat of a risk with GPI is earnings per share growth has pretty much gone nowhere. So it, it peaked around 47 for uh, 2022. 2023, it declined. 2024 is expected to decline despite them doing acquisitions. It's not going to get back to 47 until it's expected to happen in 2027 or even 2026, it gets close to that. So if you're buying GPI, you're not really getting any value from earnings per share growth. The company is mainly trying to maintain the growth that they had, which has been massive, massive growth. And this is one of the reasons why the stock hasn't been the best performer and it has been flat since 2023. Now, if you look at it after COVID, of course it went up a lot, but from 2023 till now, the stock, you know, has mainly been flat. In terms of the stock itself, all of these things are priced in the company and it's trading at seven times earnings. Now, seven times earnings or seven and a half times earnings may sound cheap, but if you think about it, you have no revenue growth or, or you have revenue growth, but you don't have earnings per share growth because margins are declining. So we don't know where margins are going to bottom. So for now, it's trading around seven and a half times earnings. I would say the stock for the current net income margins and for everything that's in the company with the high returns on capital and a lot of the acquisitions that they are trying to do, I think the stock is fairly valued for the margins and with everything that I have. It's not a bargain. If you look at the mean multiple was eight times, it's trading at seven and a half. But in 2022, it traded as low as four times. 
or three times Rolex. This was a massive, massive bargain. But I don't understand why Monish Pabrai is buying it. He believes the stock is undervalued. I personally believe the stock is fairly valued for the value proposition, potential declining net income margin, which is happening. We don't know where it's going to bottom. You have the company doing acquisition, which is ultimately going to push earnings per share growth and push value. But for me personally, looking at this buy from Monish Pabrai, I think it makes sense. I think it's a genius bet. I mean, at seven times earnings, the stock is still cheap. People are always going to be buying cars. People are always going to be fixing their cars. So for me, you know, it makes sense. But I would prefer to buy it somewhat of a lower price. Uh, maybe Pabrai bought it at 260 or 250 I think around 260 270 would be an amazing buying opportunity. But right now, at $300 per share, I don't think the stock is the best buy ever. I think there's way better opportunities. But this was just a very quick analysis of Pabrai's buy for GPI, which I think is a very genius play. I mean, I didn't think about that stuff. And a lot of the other ones, AutoNation is very interesting. And Lycia Motors is also very interesting. I might do videos on them in the future. But thank you very much for watching the video. It wasn't financial advice, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.